Hey guys, thanks for stopping by my channel today as I bring you on this quest of the perfect bath bomb for me. I actually taped a video of my bath bomb making a few weeks ago. In that video, I was like sharing with you guys my tips and tricks and how I've come so far in my bath bomb making. I've never shared like my little things that I do that I feel like make my bath bombs a good bath bomb. And then I kind of got to thinking, but do I have a good bath bomb? Is my bath bomb everything I want it to be? And it's not. I don't get warts. I don't get the powderiness. Every once in a while I have problems with them sticking together. So they're in the mold and I try to come apart and they just break apart in the mold, you know, those things. But what I do have is sinkers. Another thing, they last too, too long. I'm like ready to get out of the bath before this thing is done fizzing. <laughs> so today's video, instead of me giving you tips and tricks or thinking I'm all that when I'm really not, <laughs> I am going to share with you my journey of trying to make a floater. I was scooping out YouTube channels and the internet and trying to find out what makes a floater. A lot of what I read was technique is a big part of a floating bath bomb. I always poke holes, but it's usually to stuff with either powder or embed. Let's get to making guys. For the first batch, I am using my pre master batched little mix here. I'm using Rustic Essentials Vanilla Kiss Chrysanthemum. I have all my liquid ingredients in here. I'm gonna go ahead though and get this blending in the stand mixer and just getting that my dry ingredients super well incorporated. So just to show you my mixture right now, it's pretty well mixed in here, it, but if I, I squeeze it, it wants to fall apart a little bit like right here, it's still wanting to fall apart when I open up my finger. So I think it needs a few squirts of hot water, two squirts of water, let's see what happens. It's much better. It's still wanting to break apart a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and mold it and just see. So my bath bombs are about um, six ounces or so. So I'm gonna put a couple of rose buds in here in the bottom, because why not? I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of mixture in there, just press those rose buds in, just so they stay um, kind of on. And then I'm gonna go up to about halfway. I'm gonna add a little bit of bath bomb dust I have here. Trying to keep that in the center so you can't see it. I want it to be a surprise. One is done. On to the next one. Ah, I did it. Look at that. That's maddening. All right, guys, I have seven with three little bath bomb surprises. On to the next round. I am gonna do a coconut lime from Candle Science. I am dropping my SLSA by 1%. I know the SLSA can slow down your fizz and make your bath bombs last a lot longer. When I do my master batch of my bath bomb mixture, I find that I really don't need to uh, sift it. I've not had any problem not sifting it. Now when I did the high humidity uh, master batching, I had to sit, not only did I have to sift that guys, I had to then gr get my coffee grinder out and grind that powder back up because I think it, if I'm not mistaken, it was like buttermilk maybe, but it got rock hard in the bag. Very annoying. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not a fan of that one just because of well, that and it sunk is just as badly as this one. I gotta get my recipe back out so I know what I'm doing. You can see my yellow isn't very vibrant. It may even be more vibrant as it dries. And that's really something I had to learn with the dyes 
is they will deepen as it goes. And so when you're first using it, it doesn't feel like there's a near enough dye in the, in the mixture. And there, there a lot of times is plenty. <laughs> but I'm gonna put a couple green over here and a couple yellow over here. And I'm really anxious to see what happens with that. So there's that one. I think I wanna put a little bit of green paint mica paint or something on here tomorrow after it's dried. This is Seabilitate. I can't, I don't have my glasses on from the flaming candle. And I used a uh, turquoise dye from Nurture Soap. And I'm just putting some blue little doohickeys. Again, four. So this is actually a recipe I got from the Pro Bath Bomb course. I, I did purchase a course, I don't know, maybe three years ago. I really did find it very helpful, the course. She's no, she's no longer doing it. Oh, I hope I didn't mess that up. But I was, I was going back and looking at all my old re recipes and kind of getting a feel for what I wanted to try tonight. And I ran across this, this old recipe I got from that course. And I thought, you know what? I don't even remember if I liked it that well or not. I don't know that I loved it because I didn't stick with it. But I thought, you know, let's try her out. This one has 3% SLSA, which is the highest amount I've, I've ever used. I don't know what if there's a standard percent. So let's just see what happens. So one thing I do do when I am molding my bath bombs is I definitely let the mixture fall and sprinkle into my mold. I don't, I. I try really hard not to pack it too tight. I know that can cause your, your bath bombs to sink if it's, if it's packed too tight. So I really do make a point to just really sprinkle in my mixture. All right, this next round, I'm doing uh, Moroccan cashmere from uh, Candle Science. This is a really nice, uh, warm, like just soothing scent. I kind of like it a lot. So what I did on my Seabilitated, I just did this and then I didn't really poke any ho holes. I just kind of set my four, um, I can't think of my words tonight guys, uh, embeds around there. So for this one, I did make it orange. I am gonna poke a little bit of a hole and I'm putting four right on top of each other, right off the side here to see what kind of effect that gives us, just like that. Any little bit of resistance when you take these apart, you wanna tap more because that will make them break apart. Another thing you wanna do is you wanna fluff your mixture several times while making it. The weight of the mixture itself like will weigh itself down. So you really want a fluffy, fluffy mixture. And so just every once in a while, in the middle of your making, re-fluff it. And that'll help you keep your bath bomb be from being too compacted. Look at me give you advice, and I have sinking bath bombs. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong. All right, I am beat. I made... One, two, three, four, five different bath bomb uh, fragrances. This was back to my my original recipe I've been using for the last couple years. I just had one more bag on my shelf. I wanted to use it up. So this one is scented in Sex Bomb, which is a horrible name, I'm sorry, but I have a really cute name for it and I'm gonna call it Brick House. I'm so proud of myself on that one, guys. Do you know what I'm talking about? Brick house. Oh, that's going to... Oops, look at that. I am putting uh, Nurture Soap uh, Enviro, Enviro Glitter Wild Violet on this one. I'm loving these glitters I got from Nurture. It is 10 o'clock. That's crazy late for me. I had a lot of problems yesterday with my two halves not wanting to adhere together when I was making my bath bombs. And they would adhere long enough for me to get them all done and then they would kind of fall apart. I think one of the things that is going on is my mold, my 3D mold has, is starting to really break, 
break down on me. And I have noticed when I'm undoing my bath bombs, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. It's not centered. Like this top part is hanging off just a little bit from the bottom. So last night I stopped using my Arbor Press and I had to go back to hand pressing them. The problem with that is I tend to make bath bombs in a huge session. I, I made six, seven, like 10 different batches of bath bombs. Seven to 12 bath bombs is pretty average for me. So I, I mean, that's hard. <laughs> but I really do think that using the Arbor Press, although I really like it, I still get sore using it. I'm still sore this morning when I woke up but it really does save a lot of my um, just being able to produce that many bath bombs in a time. It really is hard on your 3D uh, plastic molds. And I know that, and I, I, I walk in with that with my eyes wide open, knowing I'm gonna be replacing those molds much more often than I should. My donut, I'm having trouble with it. It's starting to crack, but I'm probably putting too much force down on that Arbor Press. So I'm starting to think about what I need to do. And I just wanted to share with you the uh, issues that I'm having using the Arbor Press. Maybe that being janked is causing my bath bombs not to hold together because I wasn't having that problem at all until the last couple times I've made bath bombs. Throwing that out there, I don't know what, why that is all of a sudden a problem or if it's just the humidity or my mixture is wetter or drier than it used to be or those kind of things. Okay guys, so this first one is my original recipe that I'm trying to improve on. Uh, it's the same recipe as my vanilla kist in the video. I just have a lot more of these eucalyptus spearmint. And I'm taping with my phone because I'm scared to put my camera this close to a sink of water. <laughs> and it sinks. Oh, look, it's floating. Well, not exactly. I don't know, does that? No, it's not floating, guys. Even when it's small, it's not floating. It's still like way sunk. I thought, you know, if it's smaller, it'd float easier. It's been six minutes on my phone, so probably closer to five and a half minutes. Ugh, I'm already bored. <laughs> it looks like it's aggressive. I mean, it's not like boring looking at it. That looks fine. So at nine minutes, it starts floating. And it's just kind of paused. It's not really doing much right now. All right, I'm calling it, guys. It's been over 10 minutes. I'm calling it. Okay, so this is my coconut lime verbena. This is... I uh, want, I dropped the SLSA to see if I can get it to go a little faster. So let's see if it'll float. It's floating. Oh, look, it's fun. I see the green and the yellow came out right away. You know what? No, it's sunk. No, it's not floating. It's, it's at the bottom. All right, well, it's been nine minutes, so I think I will call it at this point too. Um, it's just really weird. As soon as they start floating, they just look like they're just foaming. They're not really twirling or spinning like they are when they're sunk. And if I hold it down, maybe it's just visually that's you, you don't see it as well. This one is the Sehabilitated, which is the Pro Bath Bombs course that I took a few years ago. Let's see what Sehabilitated does. It's gotta be my technique. All of these are sinkers. You can tell this one has more SLSA in it. It's very much creating a foam around the bath bomb, more so than the others. All right, I'm at the 10 minute mark. And look how long that has to go. 10 minutes, guys. Ugh. I still have like three or four more bath bombs to test. <laughs> this is freakishly long. I should market it as a freakishly long bath bomb. Over 10 minutes. And it, look how big it is still. 
I think I'll let it play out. Gosh darn it. I've already gotten my coffee. I've gotten my mail. <laughs> I posted a community question about bath bombs. <laughs> Ugh. All right, my battery's about to die, and it has been 14 minutes, and it's still this big. So I'm going to shut the bat camera off and plug in my phone before the next go-around, guys. Guys, that last one lasted 20 minutes. 20 minutes. All right, moving on. Moroccan cashmere. This one, I increased the citric acid and the baking soda just a bit. So let's see if that made any difference. It's, is it floating? No. It's like, it gives me false hope. <laughs> false hope in the floating. It's been eight minutes, so better. And I think eight minutes is much more reasonable for a bath bomb than 15 or 20. I think I need to drop my SLSA altogether. But I'm I'm closer to nine right now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna mark down nine, and then I'll come back with the last one. All right, the last one we're gonna test today. This is Moonflower. This is the high humidity uh, bath bomb from Bath Fizz and Foams website. Holy cow! <laughs> That's aggressive. That's fun colors too. It's still sunk. It's not floating. That's what I remember most is it sunk. Now, <laughs> I don't want them to last, you know, 20 minutes, but where'd it go? Is it gone? 30 seconds? That lasted 30 seconds, guys. There it is. Holy cow. I don't remember the one I tested when I made this this summer lasting like that. Look at those fun colors, though. That's good. I like the colors. And look at all that foam. That's fun. The colors are fun. The foam is nice. It's, it has a lot of milk uh, powder in it, if I remember correctly. Um, I'm really happy with the colors. That was fun, but probably because it was so aggressive, the colors were able to really shoot out. 45 seconds though, <laughs> that was a little ridiculous. Guys, I'm editing this video and it is already like 20 minutes or 25 minutes long, so I'm gonna try to make this quick. <laughs> but I have a lot to say. First things first, I still have sinkers. I started off in my head thinking I was gonna do everything the same way and just change my ingredients just to see if those played a role. And I didn't do that. I was poking holes in some, I was putting embeds in certain positions and not certain positions. That kind of all went out the window. But I will say that all of my ingredient changes that I made, they were all sinkers. So I think it's technique. If you know what I'm doing wrong, please, please help a girl out and share with me what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> Maybe my mixture's too dense and wet. So not, I don't put a lot of binder in my bath bomb mix, uh, one or two sprays, if I do any at all. So maybe my ratio is too high in oils or something like that. I know poking the holes, there was one I saw and thinking, I didn't poke a hole, what was I not? Why didn't I poke that hole? Normally, I do poke holes just like one finger, but maybe that's just not enough. I thought getting a floater was my main goal, but after my test, I think getting a shorter bath bomb shorter lasting bath bomb is going to be my number one goal. 11 minutes, nine and a half minutes, 20 minutes, nine minutes, 30 seconds. <laughs> oh my gosh. I did a community poll on my community page here and like 65% said three to five minutes. I agree. I don't think any of these are what I want. I think it should be no more than five minutes, six tops. Then, guys, <sighs> my first batch of uh, Vanilla Kissed, I had them all molded. Two hours later, I went and looked at them and 
three of them weren't broken apart. So that I made seven, so four had split apart and they were just in halves. That happened on almost every single batch of bath bombs I made that night or that weekend. I think I had one batch that held together pretty well, only one broke apart, but almost all of those batches had at least two or three of, of seven that had completely broken apart. And not when I was doing it. I mean, they did a little bit while I was molding them. But it would be, like, later. Like, I'd go down the next day. And I'm thinking, what happened? They were fine. And I come in, and they're all, like, in two parts. Two halves. I sold them. I wrapped them as a half and sold them. But it's like, ugh. So, I don't know what's causing that. If that embed is dead center of your bath bomb... Does it give it a weak point? You know, is there is there not enough bath bomb mixture to really bind together? If you know that, help a girl out. Let me know. <laughs> I don't know other than my mold is a little janked. And it's, it's a little like, it's not a perfect, it's not perfect. So I have been thinking really hard about what I want to do with my bath bombs. I don't know. I, I Obviously, I would love to have a bath bomb press. I don't know if my bath bomb sales warrants a bath bomb press. I would love for it to. And I, I think it's something that I want to continue to grow. I really do very much enjoy creating bath bombs. So now I have to I have to figure out if that's an investment I want to make. And I know I, I keep saying I'm not spending any money, and I just keep spending money. <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> eventually I'm going to run out of things to buy. <laughs> but I, I do want to be a little bit more self-contained, and this room is costing me money. And then on the other hand, I'm thinking, oh, but I'm redoing my room, and, and this is the perfect time to set up a bath bomb making station. It's like, oh my gosh, just stop. <laughs> just stop. I, I'm considering what I want to do. I know physically I do not have it in me to make 100 bath bombs in a weekend without that arbor press. So do I just keep buying more molds um, as they break down? I don't know, guys. <laughs> That's my dilemma now. If you like the video, guys, would you give me a thumbs up and share and comment and do all that lovely stuff? I appreciate that because it does help my video grow. It, you know, it just lets YouTube know that people are engaged and that is so appreciated when you do that. If you hated it, you can give me a thumbs down and I'll try not to get my feelings hurt over that. <laughs> no, no promises. <laughs> no, honestly, it's fine if you do. <laughs> if you give me a thumbs down, you, you can. I won't know it's you and it's okay. <laughs> I'm off. Bye guys. <laughs>